Hello, my name is Lily Chan. I'm Associate Professor in the Barbara T. Murphy Division of Nephrology and the Division of Data-Driven and Digital Medicine at the Aiken School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm also the Clinical Director of the Charles Bronfman Institute of Personalized Medicine. Being a part of these two divisions and the Transdisciplinary Institute allows me to use artificial intelligence to improve the care of patients with kidney disease. In the Division of Nephrology, we are using artificial intelligence to identify patient symptoms and social determinants of health in the electronic health records of patients living with kidney disease. This allows us to identify patient needs in a high throughput fashion and address these patient needs. Mount Sinai's investment into infrastructure necessary to support data-driven research such as a Mount Sinai data warehouse and high-performance computing enable us to remain at the forefront of patient-centered research. Hundreds of data points are generated on patients at every encounter. In recent years, there has been an explosion of research in artificial intelligence using this information to generate prediction models and for precision medicine. We as physicians must be at the forefront of this technological wave and have the training necessary to assess model fidelity and utility. Malsane has several educational initiatives exposing trainees to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Hi, I'm Danushka Mahatige. I'm an assistant professor in the Barbara T. Murphy Division of Nephrology and the Institute for Health Equity Research at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. It's really important to lay the framework for why kidney health disparities matter and what they actually are. In the United States, we have been contending with stark disparities by race and ethnicity in the burden of kidney disease. For instance, black Americans, despite decades of intervention, continue to have a two to three fold higher incidence of kidney failure than their white counterparts. Also notably, black Americans make up 13% of the U.S. population, but they account for 35% of our dialysis population. So this is why interventions that really address the root causes of those disparities are absolutely essential. Mount Sinai is on the leading edge of multiple interventions to try to tackle these disparities. This is being done through community engagement with partners including the National Kidney Foundation and multiple community-based organizations that are trying to tackle things like food insecurity and housing insecurity in New York, which impacts the burden and development of kidney disease, as well as things like hypertension and diabetes. Multiple faculty members at Sinai are also engaged in national policy changes, including those such as interrogating the prior use of the black race coefficient in kidney function estimation, which we know overestimated kidney function among black individuals. Multiple Sinai faculty are involved in interventions to really make the transplant process more equitable. For decades, black individuals have been less likely to be waitlisted or receive a kidney transplant versus white counterparts. We see those disparities in impacting Hispanic individuals as well, and multiple faculty members at Sinai are part of a new national set of interventions to try to disrupt those transplant inequities by looking at where bias creeps into the process and by developing uh, new systems through which community health workers and others can help patients address their critical needs that keep them from getting to kidney transplant. In the effort to really tackle disparities which we've been describing for two decades or more, it's really essential that we center patient and community expertise in those solutions. And one of the most important things that investigators at Sinai are doing are listening to patients community advocates, community leaders, in how we can really get at the root cause of these problems and design interventions that appropriately tackle them. What can we learn from the past? Uh, we can learn that without addressing things like food insecurity, transportation needs, housing insecurity, we will really not make much progress in tackling some of these disparities that we've been describing in the burden of kidney disease. My name is Evan Azerobi. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Nephrology and a member of the Black Family Stem Cell Institute at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. 
Our research is fundamentally translational. We use big data analytics to evaluate the effectiveness of drugs or uncover their potential side effects. For example, we recently used the FDA Adverse Event Reporting System to uncover the side effect of an oncological therapeutic that is used to treat leukemia. Following up on this discovery, a fellow in the lab, Dr. Benjamin Adebite, ran a clinical study and showed that patients taking this oncological drug, Desatinib, had up to 50% chance of developing kidney injury, whereas those that are taking comparable drugs did not have such an effect. We use systems biology tools to discover new actionable biomarkers and new drug targets that may potentially be used to treat chronic kidney disease. We have a unique technology that helps us build improved drug discovery platforms using stem cells. Starting with patient-drive stem cells, we use microfluidics and nanotechnology to build improved organoids on chip that actually can be used to run clinical trials on chip and evaluate the effectiveness of a drug or its potential adverse event without ever administering the drug to the patient. One of the strengths of our division that keeps us at the forefront of kidney research is our diversity in every sense of the word, not just culturally and ethnically, but also cognitively. For example, my group is comprised of physicists, engineers, biologists, and nephrologists. That's the secret sauce to our innovation and success.